What up, everyone? I'm Rich Mays Lopez. I'm Brendan Dunn, news editor of Soul Collector. I'm Matt Welty, editor of Complex Sneakers. And we are on the Complex Con floor. We made it. We made it here somehow. We're here, baby. Coming to you from the Stadium Goods X eBay booth, live in the Complex floor. Shout out to the good people at. Stadium Goods and eBay, as Brendan said, for bringing FSR out here to ComplexCon. We almost didn't make it. Yeah, I know, but we're, uh, we're happy to be here with the people, amongst the people. We are men of with the, the people, culture. so yeah, yeah, with yeah. With the culture and for the culture. Welty made it this morning. I it made was, it. It was tight. We, was we tight. thought he wouldn't show up. small window. I made it. I'm alive. Thank God for that. We have a jam-packed show today, doing it a little bit different from how we normally do it. Can we call it a special edition? Special edition, very okay, special, special edition. edition. We have news, we have best and worst, we're going to be going over everything Compass Con related, and we have the very famous and infamous Mr. John Wexler joining the show today. That's right, a wow. guest interview. Very big deal. I've Lots known Wex for a really long time. I've seen him come from where he was to where he is now, and I want to talk about that. We have questions for him. Yes. I know you guys want to see Wex here, so stick around for that. But before we get into that, Stadium Goods and eBay have linked together with the shoe surgeon to bring this here for us. Brendan, what is this? That's right, there's a That's special a custom sneaker by the shoe surgeon. There are five pairs of these being raffled off these are five. here at yeah. the eBay Stadium Goods booth this weekend. All Python construction, super premium eBay logo right here on the tongue. Some shoe surgeon details on the inside. Um, these are being raffled off for charity. All the proceeds will go to benefit victims of the wildfires in North California. So. And these Definitely are modeled good after the, the eBay dunk. Exactly, the colorway familiar for anyone uh, who knows eBay or remembers that yeah. Yeah, that famous pair of dunks. So shout That's out to the good people at Stadium Goods and eBay once again. Let's get into the show. Brendan, new section, please. All right, the first thing we want to talk about is kind of everything we've seen here in yep. terms of releases. All the brands are coming out, you know, boutiques with their own booths as well. Uh, first booth I want to talk about is Nike. Nike really went all out this year. Big. Like, like last year, a lot of it is centered around the Air Force One. They yep. have this yep. AF100 campaign. So there's guests stopping in all day. Yep. Uh, we were there with Errolson Hugh yesterday. Yep. Watched him dip dye a pair of his own Air Force Ones. Yep. They were doing customs. You could actually win a pair from they had a hundred Grail Air which, Force Ones. Which? Yep. Set, the, set the stage for Wait. people. Hold on, let him set the stage for people. Did you hear people. this? I want a pair. No, I, no, I, I, didn't, I didn't hear that. Okay, so I'm asking, uh, I won't name her, but one of our friends at Nike to, to show me the, the Air Force One Grail wall so I can in turn let the people know, because I'm a man of the people, of course. how they can get a pair of these. So I walk over with her and she basically tells me, yeah, you, you pull this little card out of the machine and then you see if you won. So yeah. very quickly she hands me a card and I flip it over and he won. Which, which, which pair, pair did you win? Ones. Um, Harlem Renaissance Air Force One. It's like the brown with the yellow and the blue. Yeah. So, but, uh, but you did cut a guy though. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't cut a guy, she put me in line. Nah, you I, cut I, a guy. So Nike, we also sat down uh, as part of the AF100 experience and customized our own Nike Air Force Ones. That was a lot of fun. You could do the dyeing stuff. Yep, you there could were, dip dye them. There around that you could embroider. Yep. Uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of impressive it's, options It's very for that. much built off of the off-white way of doing things. Yeah. You mm -hmm. can- It's like a DIY. It, exactly, right. you can make, you can honestly from the ground up build your own Air Force One, so that's mm -hmm. dope. And they are selling the Travis acronym Off White, Rockefeller, and a Miss Doncy. Doncy Air Force One. And that's all, all through the app. So they have this yep. augmented reality thing. There's posters, not actually in here, but around Long Beach and around LA. And you open up the app, you point your camera in the app at the posters, and then it sort of unlocks the shoe. And you will be one of the first to have a chance yep. to purchase the shoes. People obviously going crazy for those Nuts. lining up. I think Nike had like the most energy in, in this because in, yeah. like being, in, this, being in the center yeah. mm -hmm. with all of that going on, just seeing the kids like waiting for that was yeah. like, holy More shit. More guests to come, obviously. Yes. Yeah. And the guests so far, we said uh, Errolson, Virgil. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ronnie Feig was in the building. Ronnie Feig was also in the building. Skepta was in the building yesterday. Skepta was I in the building. Him, I'm, I'm, yeah. yeah. So big deal. Also today we're hearing whispers of maybe some big things going on today. There will be uh, some big things. So Nike as, as, as... Well, Brendan Dunn's here, so it's massive. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. <laughs> it's big. It's massive. And <laughs> let us not forget that Brendan is now wearing $600. Is that right, the retail price of these? I mean, don't worry about what something, I'm wearing, man. Something don't worry about what Sneakers cost, cost as much as my jacket. Some, oh, okay. <laughs> That's a double flex. Uh, so Nike, as Wealthy said, a lot of energy here, but we also want to talk about the exclusive footwear sponsor of ComplexCon, and that is Puma. They also have a big installation here. Yeah, impressive space. Walkthroughs, yes, Jules was here. Uh, big Sean was here. Yes, Gunner Stall was here. Told me? In, the, in the building. I'll tell you later. Okay. They're also giving away uh, Puma deals. You can come to ComplexCon and get a deal with Puma on site. Did you try? Which is crazy. No, I'm already sponsored. So uh, come through, check that out. Puma's doing uh, a lot of big things. 
all centered around their Puma suite, 50 campaign and right. also Rihanna, The Weeknd, and all of that. And well, that takes the, us to... You were at the Adidas booth Adidas. quite a bit, right? I was at the Adidas booth as... You're obviously a big Adidas fan. Yeah, as a lot of people know, the big thing was the Pharrell NMD. Massive. Huge trail. Massive. Um, we saw the line for that. that before, shit. before you could actually line up, there were somehow... 40 people, 50 people, 100 people maybe lined up for it, and then they kicked everybody yeah. off. Yeah, it seemed, I mean, it I like mean me, personally, me personally, it's like seeing those lines just kind of like turn, turns you off from wanting to even get a part of it. You're yeah. just like, oh, I don't have a chance. Yeah. You know, yeah, there's yeah. like, there's 60 people waiting on line already. So there was definitely a concerted effort to keep control of the lines here at CompassCon, yeah. believe us, okay? But there's only so many things you can do when there's a rabid group yeah. of kids trying to knock down the Adidas booth. But especially the, let's talk about the undefeated. There was a word going around yesterday that the undefeated. Yeah, had there to, was something there they too. They had to. They had to kind of reschedule the release to today the because everything. kids got too crazy. Yeah. yeah. Like, what? What part do you like draw the line where you're like, this shit? Is where someone's getting hurt. Where yeah. Someone's getting hurt. So Adidas again. Uh, Pharrell came through. Yeah. Yep. Pusha came through. Yep. John Wexler came through. Very important. Nick Galway and we'll be came coming through. through here. Nick Galway came through. So Wex is showing his collection. Uh, which goes from Run DMC days to modern day. Nick Galway showing rare things, right? Nick Galway is kind of showing uh, design inspirations. Okay. Um, he has the original Pharrell NMD. He right. has like the original lacing system yep. for it, stuff like that. They also have a Pharrell, what is it, that unreleased friends and family shoe yeah, over there. They're giving yep. away a lot of that stuff through these gumball They're giving away yeah. NERD stuff. Yeah, so you could come here, convention get a ticket, or get a gumball, same type of thing. And if you get the right one, you might get welcome home with some crazy FNF NMD. Do you guys wish that we had this when we, we were younger? Um, Gumball machines to get sneakers out? No, I mean like these like... Okay. You know what, I don't, like I don't know what if the culture about? was ready for that at that point. I think we've reached a point now where we can have something like this, but I don't yeah. think even five years ago we were ready for this Like in like, in like 2007, you know, if there was like a release, but yeah. I, I don't think there would have been I mean, I guess the, the closest thing is precursor shows like Dunk Exchange or Sneaker Con, but not, that's because the brands, I know, yeah. but like if there's if there's anything you can point to as the seed sure. of all that, that's the or best comic, you can do. You but, go back to Comic Con. Yeah, but like it's not the same in terms of the way brands get involved because as we saw here today, the brands and you know, the, the boutique accounts and the smaller stores really showed yeah. out. Yeah, and that's the thing. Obviously, this is a sneaker show and we're going to talk about sneakers the whole time, but let's not get it twisted. Sneakers are a big part of complex con but, the there's so, but there's so much more going on here there's so many more exhibitors here and it's really a lot more about the culture from a holistic perspective than it is about sneakers Although, itself also very important update hold up very important you update. say sneakers and stuff is that a shout out to our friends shout out to my man will when he has sneakers and stuff yeah. so very important update i promised on twitter that i would not leave complex con without a pair of nerd human races and how is my that going flight, for you my flight takes off at 8 50 local time we are about eight hours away from that. The clock is ticking. And I do not have a pair. The clock well, we is got, ticking. Well, we got wax. I don't have a pair. I'm sure he could. <laughs> That's very important. Yeah. If I don't get a pair, I'm going to stay here, cross legs, sit down, Indian style, and I'm not leaving. No, you should just DM him, him like real leaving. time. You should DM him right in front of him and be like, That's yo, wax. I'm still here, wax. needs is more DMs. He doesn't need any Although, more DMs. I had a conversation with Clark Kent um, yesterday, and I asked him, I was like, yo, if you were 15 years old and this shit happened, he goes, bro, I would lose my fucking mind. Yeah. In addition to Puma, Nike and Adidas. There were also independent installations here. Yes. Uh, undefeated. Yeah. There was New a Balance crazy bands. line there. Yeah. Uh, Bodega. Bodega. I was, I was pretty impressed with what Bodega had going on. Also the PacSun booth where they with were the FOGs, raffling right? off. Yeah. The Fear of God yep. Red Vans era. Yo, the concept Vans. booth was crazy. The yes. concept's New Balance where they had a fucking sandcastle. Yes. Yeah. Out of control. Uh, the line at Union. For these joints right here, I'm going to flex one time. Oh, uh, shit. It's going to go real deep in the chair like this for a second. <laughs> <laughs> was uh, insane over the last two and days. And you were in the line? Or? No, absolutely not. Come on, stop it. So then how? Stop it. Explain that to me. No, I won't. Uh, the line that undefeated, as Matt said, for the 97. Yeah, they had to shut it down. Got uh, violent. Uh, violent? Yeah, I heard it got violent. But anyway, no one got hurt or anything like that. So that's all that matters. Also, extra butter. A6 Ghostface. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you had the Project Blitz those boost blew out, with the Project Blitz. They had the mini ramp with, with the all Tiffany's. Yeah, they yeah. were giving yeah. away original pairs of Tiffany yeah. dunks and uh, I think a mixture of the highs and the lows. And so Compass Con, it was all here. Amazing, unreal experience. It was too. It was actually a little bit too much. It was too much. Especially for us because we're working, but we're, we're also only halfway to buy through sneakers. it. Yeah. We, and also, we survived today. Listen, hopefully. Listen, I wanna, don't want to get this twisted either. We have not been able to cop anything. Nope. 
period. We're here before anyone gets here. We leave after everyone is gone and we have gotten nothing. So don't act like people are like, oh, you guys got the inside link and mm -hmm. people in my DMs and your DMs, I'm sure, asking for VIP bands. My nephew needs to stop it, by the way. It's not going to happen. Or, you know, people who used to work at Complex who don't work who, there who anymore remain and I spoke to in months. That's not going to happen. Yeah, we don't have That's any juice. Don't get it twisted. One of the biggest things this Complex Con was the Sneaker of the Year panel. That was amazing. That yesterday. was a good time. Who was on that panel? That was a good time. There was uh, Alila May. Yes. Uh, Alila. Wale. Clark Wale, Kent, Clark, Clark Kent, yep. Russ Banksen, Russ Banks Jay, Balvin, Jay Balvin, Victor Cruz, Victor Cruz, and Lonzo Ball. Lonzo Ball, and hosted by Joel, Joel Puma. Puma. So they got together yeah. and conversed, argued, uh, kind of came to a conclusion. I think the best thing about less. the panel was is that Joe had said when it started, he goes, I want the audience to express their opinion if they agree or disagree. Yeah. And you heard a lot of banter there coming were, yeah, There were rarely any agreement from the audience, right? And I, and I love that the flying to Air Jordan 1 was considered trash. But it, collect immediately collectively. Booed, <laughs> immediately booed by everybody except Col Rich Mays Lopez. <laughs> Let the record show. Oh, also, Clark, for it. Clark Kent getting nearly like booed off a stage for saying it was hard for him to buy sneakers. I don't know so about booed listen, off stage, listen. But yeah. Last, last, last week on FSR, we were kind of talking sneaker of the year prematurely, because, because prematurely, but we prematurely, were yeah. He's still gonna, it. he's still on this. There's two months left. <laughs> Brendan's hoping there's a rare like hyper adapt like coming out that's gonna like <laughs> cinch it as him for like <laughs> that says that says Brendan Dunn on it, right? Yeah. It may or may not be in the works. So footwear news we spoke about. They had the off white Air Jordan One as the sneaker of the year. Right. Uh, Again, we didn't come to a consensus yesterday at, at, at the uh, complex conversation, but the off-white Air Jordan 1 was in the running for the number one sneak of the year. You, last week you said- I'm fine with that. You're fine with it. So, but I said that I wanted to wait because I've been two more months. I've been doing just some, in case an off-white hyper doing, adapt drives. I've been doing some field research here. Field, field research. research. Field research. No, I've been, go, I've, I've been going around. Did you have a clipboard? <laughs> no. Uh, either way. Talk no, to us about your field research. No, but I've been going around asking people what their sneaker of the year is. Okay. You know, um, I'm surprised that it hasn't been. A lot of people been telling me not the Jordan One, the Presto. The Presto. Off-white wow. Presto. I've been getting that as the consensus sneaker of the year from industry people. I'm gonna agree with that. We do have a guest who could yes. maybe speak to what he thinks is the sneaker of the year yes, or let's how, get to how that list kind of is shaking down. We want to bring on Adidas' own, the Yeezy Whisperer, yes. John Wexler. The man, the myth, the legend himself, John Wexler, is in the building with us today. How you guys doing? Came through with works. the 700 Wave Runners on too. Decided to break them out for you guys. All right, first. Thought I bring something new to the table. <laughs> there's, a, there's a rumor that they may, they may be dropping their complex strong. Is that uh, a rumor? Actually, I know you guys are talking about things that were hard to get. Yes. I heard you talking about lines too. Yes. So I think it's worth noting that kids have been waiting since Wednesday for those NERDs to drop. Yeah. Camped outside. I know that that matters here. Yeah. There, were, there was word that kids had actually <clears throat> broken through the barrier yeah. um, yesterday. Um, 300 but, kids, yeah. Yeah, they broke through the barrier and rushed, rushed <clears throat> the floor. There's been a lot of talk about yeah. everything that was going on at all the booths. Because I was listening to the show. Yeah. You know, I watched the show. I'm a fan. Thank you, Wes. Of course. Say it into the camera, please. Yeah. I don't watch every week because of just travel and stuff, yeah. but I definitely, the wifi every time the I plane. can, I try yeah, to check it. For real, so, uh, the line for the NERD shoe started Wednesday. To your point, I think 300 kids were already at our booth yesterday when I got here yeah. at 8 in the morning, yeah. and they weren't people who had sort of done the things that you sure. needed to do to get into that line. A lot of kids camped out, a lot of kids in line, they came through the booth. I think there's another version of that today, but I'm not 100% sure of what's happening. Unfortunately, there's so much going on, yeah. it's hard to keep track. We but, didn't even know. We, no, we don't so, know. Yeah. Keep it up front. Did Adidas, do you think Adidas is one complex car? I think we're only in day two. I think yesterday was a great start. Okay. Did someone win yesterday? I, think it's, it's, I think it's over two days. It's over two days. Like, who do you I, think? I'm not. I've never been a fan of taking early victory laps. Are you oh. taking? Are you looking at that from a brand perspective? Like, we're trying to win Complex Con. Is that like a thing that you guys talk about? I think or? that the brand itself, of course. I mean, we showed up very strong. We've yeah. had a three ring circus of events going on. You know, going into what you were saying about not being able to get product. Yeah. So you know, yesterday we had Pharrell come through. All the NERD came through. Yep. Ferg came through. Pusha yep. came through. We were doing a series of activations with Foot Locker as well with Cardi. Yep. Um, Sav uh, Young Thug. Thug. Yeah, yeah, the Foot Locker booth is it was, it was a lot of energy pushing went through there. And then at the end of the day, we did something epic, which was we allowed kids to, through this Willy Wonka type golden ticket, raffle paddles. Okay. And then we raffled oh. off very rare and impossible things to get. So NERD Stuff band member released, shoes. Right? Yeah. Wow. So like not just the NERD shoes that kids could get in the morning, I also don't have but them. with the red, same. <laughs> but kids with the red heel tap, same. Trust me. And I'm putting that out in the universe because 
I'm hoping to walk Say away with the them camera, today. The camera. Please. Uh, so the raffle starts out with all these like very difficult to get things. Everything from hand painted Yoji Yamamoto That's crazy. painting, which is what I really wanted, mm -hmm. to um, a variety of sneakers that are impossible to get. Samples, things that only Pharrell has, yeah. HU, NMDs. And then at the end, we also graciously thank you, Kanye, were able to raffle off some pairs of these wow. wave runners. I didn't know that. Wow. So that so happened on Saturday. That happened yesterday afternoon yep. at the end of the day. All I know is the kids that were getting those items, I saw tears, mm. you know, and the joy when those numbers, you know, we literally did the ball coming up like a lottery. Yeah. Yeah, the energy was spectacular, and today's we got another game to play, but I'm feeling very strong and happy about how we showed up. And also, ultimately, the kids will decide who won. Exactly, yeah. and, and to be honest, I don't really, I see everything that's happening. We look around the marketplace, but we're in our own lane. We're trying to have a point of difference and do what we've been doing for the last two years. We've set the tone, and now people are reacting to what we're doing. For the 13 years that I worked at Adidas prior, mm -hmm. it, that wasn't necessarily the case. Yeah. Think, so I'm very happy with how it's been. Thing I gotta ask you, so yesterday yeah. we had our Sneaker of the Year panel, right? Yeah. There was only one Adidas sneaker on the panel. Was that a miss? I think we put out a lot of great product this year. I don't know what product you're referencing. What was the was one sneaker? One. Yeah, the Yeezy oh, yeah. Wave so this runner. was very new and great. What were the other sneakers? They were all Nike. So basically there was a, 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 a list of 30 sneakers uh, compiled and then everyone who was on the panel picked their 15 favorite out of those. And who was on the panel? Uh, so I, I, are, you, are, you, are you like taking people <laughs> off a of seating list like right away? No, like, I'm just curious like uh, who's on Nike's payroll uh, on the panel? <laughs> Well, you had, you had Joe LaPuma, Wale, uh, uh, Clark, uh, Clark Kent, Clark Kent, Russ, Russ Bankson, Victor Cruz, uh, J Balvin, and so Lonzo Ball. Lonzo Ball. So are you are you saying that the panel might have been skewed? No, I was just I don't know. Okay, I was just asking honest <laughs> questions. Do you think do you think Nike did something but, behind the scenes? No, not at all. <laughs> I'm just curious why there was none of our collaboration partners or people that have had signature shoes with us mm. or whatever were on there. Interesting. I think that's a valid point. You mentioned that over the last two years, yes, sir. you feel that Adidas has set the tone, right? Yeah. You and I met about 10 years ago. At that point, you just- How you old just, were you then? I was 10 years old. Adidas was not doing that at that time. At that Here's time- Here's the thing. I think that the critical flaw that most brands make yep. is they start to believe that they're actually accomplishing things. Okay. Steve Stout said it to me a few years ago. He said, good enough is the enemy of great. Because when you get compl you get complacent when you're doing just good enough, sure. and we thought we were doing great stuff. Don't get me wrong; I was very proud of our work, yeah. or I am still very proud of that work. But I recognized in after 2015 February when we dropped the 750 and did season one, yeah. mm -hmm. what the difference was between a between incrementalism sure. and radical change. Sure. I'm a fan of what we've been doing. We take a we took a serious departure from just kind of iterating on things we had done forever. So really trying to create a new territory for the for the industry. And if anything, I would say that the page in our playbook that we were running for the last few years is now what a lot of brands are starting to delve into. Mm -hmm. So what do you think Adidas was doing wrong 10 years ago when we met? It's not more so what we were doing wrong. It was that we weren't taking the risks that were bold enough to bring new consumers into the brand. Okay. So I think that part of that is just taking risks and being not afraid to fail and learning from those mistakes in a in a different way. And we've restructured the entire company to embolden our creative community and really just unify behind messaging. Yeah. I, I think that the brand is just focused and determined. Mm -hmm. We allowed our obsession for, for pushing the envelope to, to really, you know, put some teeth into that. Yes, the success I mean, has followed. I mean, obviously you guys jumped over jumped over the jump man, you know, recently became the number two sneaker brand in America. What was that day like? Do you remember were you on Adidas campus? Obviously that's like a great thing that you see in the, the press or whatever, but yeah. We can't buy into that that narrative. I think that the whole Nike versus Adidas narrative is kind of an outdated one. And so that's, you know, going back to what I'm saying, because I think Adidas that challenges are coming now. from everywhere. Well, I love what Big Baller Brand's doing, you know, because if he was in the music industry, people would be talking about him like Chance the Rapper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But because we're in such an institutional industry where there's like these, you know, major brands in the space and traditional retail, I mean, that's that whole thing is being rethought. I mean, look mm -hmm. at the Carbon 4D shoe. Yeah. which, you know, is going to revolutionize shoe production capabilities. You know, we're working with Parlay to take bottles out of the ocean and recycle them in the shoe materials. This will be, a, this will be an ultra boost. This yeah. will be in a shoe. <laughs> yeah. That will actually be Other easy. brands are sticking these on the bottom of shoes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ten years ago, like I said, when we met, you were working closely with the NBA footwear that you guys had at the time. Most recently, your name is more closely related with Kanye, Pharrell, going back to Snoop Dogg, Pusha, and all the entertainment collaborative partners that you have. What role did you play in that? 
That's a good question. My role for the last nine years has been overseeing the entertainment and influencer uh, space for the brand. And we have offices in LA, London, and Berlin. You guys consider us influencers? Uh, he said no. <laughs> so you guys are media. Yeah, no, you don't in our, no, no, in our world, you guys are media. One so day. you guys work for, for like media publications, so that doesn't fall so if within I was my to, team's So if I was to talent. give my two weeks right now, I could then become an influencer and get free NERDs. Is that the way to do it? I think I might. Although there are, nice there are, there are, I was gonna say, we should some, all resign uh, right now. There, there are some complex that's employees. The there are some complex TV. employees who do cross the threshold. Oh, to, okay, but it's not, it's not, but it's not, their name? It's no. not just us. There's a lot of snitching going on the show today. Oh. So my role was with the NBA stuff, our team's responsibility was to give promo, you know, seed that. Right, And then to the real if we had like an athlete who was launching a signature sneaker, right. um, our role would be to bring in artists who they were inspired by, sure. affiliated with, sure. um, as part of those activations. But I wasn't really, we're not really involved in that part, so I can't really speak to that. Yep. So how did that um, role transition to Kanye, Pharrell, so push it? In 2012, we went from a product seeding outlet to yep. the team that was then trying to build those relationships at a deeper level and bring them closer to the brand through what advertising or product collaboration. And that's when our team started working more closely with the product teams to help them amplify products. So it was a structural shift internally. Then in 2013, 2014, you know, it's no mystery. Our business was not where we wanted it to be. We noticed that there were people out there who wanted to get more of the creativity into the marketplace. So Kanye and I started speaking on the phone. How did that um, conversation start? The, the conversation about bringing Kanye oh, into Adidas. Okay, so there's a member of his team in Good Music who's very close with Todd Krinsky, actually, at Reebok. Yeah. Oh, wow. And so Adidas and Reebok, obviously, are, yep. are brother and sister brands, I should say. And so they were speaking with Todd, and he called me, because we build together, obviously, yeah. to make sure that each play a role within the overall architecture of what we're trying to accomplish. And he said, we've got this call. It's probably a better fit for you guys right now with what mm. you guys are trying to accomplish. Uh, we spoke for the first time in May of 2012, I want to say. You and Kanye, yes, direct. They were in Hawaii uh, doing Cruel Summer, yep. and we spoke for a very long time and formed a pretty solid relationship. And then we met probably almost a year later. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but during that course of that year, I was probably talking to him as much as I spoke with my wife. Like, we were talking a lot. He was able to really give us the sauce. Then we obviously had to do our part and, and be able to marry that up with our overall organization. Right. And the rest, like I was saying earlier, the organization really bought into it and, and thought, yes, this guy is an incredible creator and drives all of culture. And yeah, it, it just kind of blossomed from there. Did you get in trouble at all for that? Did you get, like, does anyone, was there any corporate pushback? On the Kanye for bringing Kanye into the full, because I mean, he is. Well, I mean, I'm not gonna like overplay my role. There's, there's definitely like a, a, a team of people that, that all need to buy in and because collaboration right. internally is the right. only way this stuff is successful. It was very clear that he was not maximizing the opportunity over there based on certain parameters they were putting into that relationship. And over there being Nike. And wh where else was he? I mean, I just want to make sure. He did some I mean, stuff. So he if you say sometimes. the word, do you so, get like shocked or something? <laughs> it's just, I don't, I don't want to put any energy into yeah, my yeah. main competitor. Yeah, fair enough. I respect that. So a lot of people. In fact, my job is to take their energy. Now what I feel like is, you know, throughout that course of time, we we're already building with a lot of good music artists. Yeah. And the whole thing about it is that we're building a record label mentality. We look for guys who are influential to the community of people here who want to emulate their dress style and really have that ability to set a trend, you know, and um, communicate that to a broad audience. Your predecessor at the job, Gary Aston, you know, who's the Friend, friend of the program, whatever. Gary. He he had a quote. Legend. He had Legend. a quote where, when he was doing the job, uh, saying that um, he wouldn't connect with boy bands. That was like his no-go zone for the director of entertainment marketing or whatever his, his title was. Do you have a, a no-go where it's like you stay away Other from? Other than us. Other than us, obviously. Other than this very panel. <laughs> I, I realized when you guys were talking about the NERD shoes earlier that that's why I'm on the show. Go, go ahead. Should Sorry. we just do it? Should we just do it? No, let me finish first. <laughs> so where's our go, no go? Yeah. We're looking for people who are, it's, it's more of a where do we go. We're looking for people who are like pushing boundaries in, in their field, really on the edges of different communities and can, can help the brand grow in different areas. We're looking for people who can tell stories for, as sharp points for our bigger you know, categories, like what we're doing in originals, what we're doing in running, what we're doing in basketball. What would be a no-go? It's hard to say, man. Hard to say. But I do know the goes. A lot of people, or some people, like to take away from 
Kanye's effect on Adidas and on the sneaker business, on sneaker culture. Yeah. What do you personally think about Kanye's effect? Would you on fight Matt Powell with the song? Oh <laughs> Let me finish the question before oh you God. before you make it worse. <laughs> if you were to look at the very first moment that shoe debuted at the Video Music Awards at the MTV Awards, that was February 12th, 2015. And our stock was at $51 at that point in time. It is now tracking at the growth rate of Bitcoin since that date. It's the only other thing that compares. The person you mentioned who has blocked me on Twitter for disagreeing Myself with him about well. this. Yes, yeah. I you, actually two, ta I ta ago. I taught a this class for him and he blocked me on Twitter beforehand. And then someone asked him if he should go on full size run after I taught his class at Rutgers <laughs> University. And he says, I don't see the value in full size run. Right. But if John Wexler is here, there's obviously great value the in being here. The price just went up. <laughs> I, for someone who doesn't believe in the Kanye effect, he sure writes about it a lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I don't, I don't know of anything else that people write about that doesn't exist. Interesting. So, but going into your question, you know, our stock was at 51 then. I've been showed the shoe on his foot on his like Blackberry. Yep. Yeah, I think we and all remember where that we were planned? when that happened. Uh, the unveiling of that shoe was planned for that moment. I'm not sure in a perfect world it would have been through that. Executed but, that way. <laughs> but then I talked to Kanye about it. He's like, look, everything I do is through the family and this is family and that's an organic way and that's how I do it. And I was like, oh, you know, and it's a real, like he does everything in an unorthodox way. That's why we worked with him in the first place. So it's like, we couldn't be mad. Mm -hmm. You don't be mad about it. In fact, we've worked on it for so long. I mean. We we're celebrating the fact that it had finally seen light of day. And you know, the, v the video music awards for that performance was the supposed to be the start of that rollout. Three days later, we're in New York. That next day, he's, you know, the kids giving them the very first pairs that were ever sold. There was a lot of energy there that week. Our main competitors spent probably 10 times more than they spent on their booth here in that moment. And we did a fashion show for season one, if you were to look at the entire conversation around all brands and their portfolio versus what we did with that one moment, it was like night and day. I mean, it was almost as if they didn't exist. Mm -hmm. You know, fast forward to Fashion Week's a lot of mad scrambling to do new things. Yeah. You know, that was again another thing that we drove as a significant point of difference in the marketplace. You know, just bringing newness. Like we are creating newness. One of one of our before we get you out of here, this is something that we speak about at length on every FSR, right? And it's something that you touched on earlier. We feel, I'll speak for myself, but we've spoken about this before, that Adidas is getting now at this point a little bit iterative again, where as a brand, you guys are bringing out the same products with a new thing here. Am I being fair that we've spoken about this before? Go ahead, another boys. NMD, another NMD, another version of the Ultra Boost, another version of the NMD, another, another version EQT of a Yeezy, another EQT. It's not revolutionary as it was two years ago. It's more iterative. Are you afraid that you guys will fall into an iterative space again? What, what shoes you got? <laughs> Wex, come on, man. No, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just trying to like have an equivalent discussion. Listen, so that's, that's a fair you point. Just that's a fair point. The year yesterday. <laughs> you just told me the shoe of the year yesterday was a discussion around I mean, a shoe that we you're get. wearing from 1984. Five. <laughs> yep. I was in seventh grade when that came out. I'm from Chicago. Um, but Adidas at the same time has gotten no, no, a reputation. No, no. So I think that that's something that people like to talk about with our products. Right. But I'm always wondering why there's no conversation around that anywhere else. You know, the same way that no one talks about how Nike's had the worst, oh shit, I said it. Performing stock on the Dow for the last two years. That doesn't get mentioned, but it's a factual statement. We have a lot of newness in the booth. We have a lot of freshness that's starting to trickle out. And I think that 2018 is gonna be one of those years where, especially as it gets into like, well, Big we're, things we're about creating the new, and newness is what we're all, what, what you will continue to see from us. We're definitely, where, uh, you know, I look at that ten, that that shoe is great. I love I love that shoe, Thank and I love you. the Thank ten. You, I love Virgil. I love everything they do. But I'm also concerned about like technology companies who are entering the space. I mean, it's everyone from 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 those guys to Tesla that I'm thinking about. Sure. So we're definitely looking forward to uh, what's coming next. Yep. Uh, we we appreciate you coming on the show today, John. Before 100%. we get out of here. We're going to talk about something. We always talk about our best and worst things for the week. Yep. Uh, this time we're going to keep it specifically to Complex Con. Feel free to chime in if you want. I'm going to say the best thing that I saw here at the show was actually people getting kicked out of line when they were lining up when they weren't supposed to be. A lot of a lot of staff or exhibitors were trying to jump lines and get ahead of the people who. Did you try to camp out for anything? Uh, no, I didn't. Honestly, I did not. I would, you know, that's, Very a, fair. I, that's a fair I, question. I, I, but, I admit it. But Good. you know, a lot of people paid money to have these VIP bands, and you know, like you said, camped out for for some time. And I was impressed 
that those people were actually given the best chance and, and yeah. not too many employees or exhibitors were able to jump ahead of them. There was there was like 300 kids immediately, right? ahead of the actual kids who had done yes. all the things that you're talking yes. about to be able to get in there. And unfortunately, I did see, I mean, it's fortunate for the kids who put in their due diligence to get right. a shot. My worst thing very quickly was the Big Baller brand. They really flubbed this moment. They had a big chance and they did it. And you know I love Big Baller you brand. You went to the Big Baller brand booth? Uh, booth. Um, but anyway, were you the first person online? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I spent some Why time at the Big Baller brand booth. Wex, again, thank you, my man. It's been a long You're not time let coming. Wealthy talk? No, I'm not gonna let Wilson <laughs> talk. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, are we trying to cut me off like that? I'm not, what kind of? What we kind gotta of, wrap it up. What kind of shit is this? Let him go. Let him go. Wealthy, what was the best? Oh, I really, honestly thing? thought the best was the uh, your vintage collection at the. Not to say it like that. You but. stopped the show for that. <laughs> I you, you, needed, you, needed, I, I, you needed to extend the show for that. I say just so I get my fair fucking shot, You said man. that so you could get your NERDs. No, oh, no, 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 I don't want them. Let, let the man it. talk. You know I don't like Of course shoes, Wex so wants whatever. me to talk, man. <laughs> no, I thought, I, I was I was excited. Uh, the archive, the archive yeah. stuff, the twin strikes and the... Yeah. That's your, that's your lane. Are I we, love that. So, yeah. That is my lane. Okay. So Nick Galloway put a lot of that information together and uh, I thought that was really cool too. It, it was fun going through there because I used to work in product in 2000, 2001, 2002. And so it was great seeing like the whole history timeline and then, you know, going into the stuff I brought in. That's why I brought the JMJ shoes because right. that was so, such a poignant and important moment. Our brand likes to reference our history, but at the same time use it to propel us forward. And I think that, you know, going back to your question about what were we doing yep. prior to that, I think at that point in time, we got caught up in our own thinking that everyone thought the stuff we thought was cool was cool was cool mm -hmm. and I think that you know if I look around at some of these other brands here I think that they're doing a really good job of trying to get out of their own way the same way we got up out of our own way a couple Definitely. years ago Definitely. are you good now are you done you sure come on man we could talk about Gary all day <laughs> we both love him do you, do you have a, we both love Gary do you have a best thing you saw real quick at the show this weekend oh, well man. I mean personally you know, or worse. I don't know if you guys were at the, at the event last night, but seeing 60 people on stage with Pharrell, mm. head to toe in Adidas, was mm. a very powerful and almost emotional thing for me, you know. Your boss is going to mention that at your end of the year review. You think Wex has end of the year reviews? <laughs> Wex, is, Wex is his own boss. He actually seeds himself the sneakers. <laughs> Himself. <laughs> all right, all right. No, 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 but I thought that was awesome. But at the booth, that, will your, will seeing your the reaction of the kids show, at the raffle. And maybe we'll be influencers and not media because that's kind of shitty. It's kind of shitty. Way. Is, seeing the emotion in the kids' faces when they won those raffle items. Imagine oh the emotion on my no. face when I get any RDs. Same. I, I know you guys think I got like a box of them. I got nothing. I'm telling you. I saw Balvin last night at the show. I was like, you got these before me, Chad Johnson. I was like, you guys are killing it, because anyone with a close personal connection, sorry with Pharrell, he's he's seeding those two and I'm praying that I'm on that list. So am I. So uh Wex again. My man. We appreciate Thank you. So much. We appreciate we you appreciate being it. here. It's been good to see you from ten years ago when we you started 13 years ago, I started about 10 years ago, so about the same time where you were to where you are now. Congratulations Likewise. on all your success. Thank you for joining us. Yes. We appreciate it. That was Thanks. Full Size Run from Complex Con. Shout out to the good people at Stadium Goods and eBay for bringing us out here. Make sure to check out their raffle for charity. I'm Rich Mays Lopez. I'm Brendan Dunn, news editor at Soul Collector. I'm Matt Welty, editor of Complex Sneakers. Till next time, y'all. Peace. Listen, this is important. I need you to subscribe. They're going to make me keep wearing these fake Skechers Yeezys until we hit 50,000 subscribers.